It's your breath in our lungs. So we pull. So that's pretty cool. Let me see here. Boom. Boom. Let's see if I can get some holy rollers out here with me on Sunday morning. They're probably everybody's in church though, so you know. We'll see though. I'm trying to come up with a name for this thing. Chris Hoffman, of course he is watching. I'm delivering this morning, listening to some praise and worship on the beautiful Sunday. How are you this morning? Of course I slept, bro. Yes. How are you this morning? This song is pretty awesome. Just heard it. I listened to it again. What is the name of it again? I'm trying to come up with a name for this thing, and I'm thinking like door dashing. Dios, Dios dashing, like dashing with Dio for dashing with God. I don't know. I can't figure out a name but door dashing with the divine is pretty good but I'm not divine I guess I am because I'm a child of the one true king but it's not what I meant for that to sound like it's such a weird job but it gives you a lot of time to think about the world and people in it and what they're doing from day to day because you know, I'm kind of like work for myself and I can walk into a situation like IHOP a second ago where I was. I'm taking this delivery right now. Um, I'm getting it figured out to where I now I've got my music outsourced from my tablet in through the Bluetooth so it won't mess up my music. So you can hear praise and worship while I'm doing this. And I can use the GPS on my tablet. Because I was smart, I got a tablet with GPS built in so that I could use it in this job. And boy, that's coming in handy. I didn't even think about doing this until the other day. And I was like, this camera is pointed at me. And people might be interested in seeing this crazy job of going from one place to another. Like I'm taking IHOP right now, I'm about to turn right. I'm down in Hoover on Lakeshore, I've been all over this morning, but where I was in IHOP, people were all angry because it was so crowded in there, and I saw some lady had her son, and when he, when they, right when they walked out the door, I mean, she leveled into him just because he didn't walk forward, she just, and I, it blows my mind how I've been just like that at times, and if there was a, a version of me now standing there next to me when I was that upset about something I would have been like dude you gotta relax don't be so angry at your children and everybody's standing in this waiting room half of them are wearing masks and half of them aren't and there's this one guy with his son standing outside one guy, and he was this kind of a Hispanic dude. And I was just like, that's the smartest dude here. Cause I mean, he was the only happy person it seemed there. And he was out standing outside. So my goodness, I need a haircut. That's ridiculous. Um, hold on a second. I gotta take a left and a right. I've been to these apartments before and ended up with a bunch of free groceries because the lady did not put her address in correctly. And when I tried to call her, she wouldn't answer the phone. And I can't get get it to him. I can't get it to him. 
Dashing with the debonair. No, that that would turn right. That's on course, but I'm looking for something holy, Chris. Um, delivering with out without the devil. <laughs> okay, how do I even get into this place? Uh oh. Guest entrance only. There's a keypad back there. I gotta hold on a second, guys. I gotta look and see if they gave me the number for this thing. Here's another fun part. When you end up in a situation like this, I don't really know how to get into this place, but look, there's a guy leaving. I'm just gonna go in that way. Instead of looking up this number, I'm gonna just jump in this way and hope that my car doesn't get crushed by these metal doors. I don't think it will. Look at this, there we go, boom, done. All right, so now I don't have to look up that number, yay. So let me flip that back. Cool, Tyler Shaw, did I see that? Yes. Man, how are you, Tyler? God, what a cool dude there. Yeah, I love the keypad, Chris. I love having to find the instructions if they were smart enough to leave the instructions. Yet another opportunity to forgive somebody if they fail to realize the life that I'm living for them to bring them their food. Up. Oh, this is a moment of, of uh, moment of humility for me. Breathalyzer. Yeah, because I got a, got into trouble. Take oh, the wait. Step, then your destination will be on the right. Oh yeah, that's a pass, of course. I wouldn't make it far if I didn't pass. Oh man. Okay. Reed Russell, what's up, dude? You man, I was just thinking about you the other day. You are doing awesome, Reed. It's good to see you, man. 1124, great. I'm gonna go find this thing. Now I get to find apartment number 1124 in this huge maze of apartments. It'd be pretty cool if I could talk to you guys. Please write something on the chat. Reed, are you still there? Man. Reed Russell went through the foundry with me. I've been through the foundry so many times. Chip Stiepelmeyer was there. I don't know if Chip was there the same time that I was there with Reed Russell. Because I went through so many dang times. It's ridiculous. All right, I'm looking for building 11, 1100. Hey, Bambi, what's up, girl? I'm uh, working right now, delivering some food. And uh, something came over me the other day and told me, I'm been, the Lord's been trying to tell me that there's something I'm supposed to do that's big and prolific. And I've wanted to not accept that for the longest time and just deny that, that that's for me or that that's me at all in any way. But he keeps whispering it to me in different ways. Sometimes he yells it at me. 1100, boom, just like that. See, I could choose to see that as a confirmation for what I just said. <laughs> I don't need any more confirmations, though. He's he's overdone it. Um, he always overdoes things. He He's a show-off, the ultimate show-off. But, um, all right, 1124. Here's, really? And just to see where my heart is, he's going to put 1125 through 1128. I gotta back up and look back here. Boom, 1124, yes. Um, so the other day, it just came over me to do this and see what would happen. I don't even know. And what it's really become pretty incredibly is uh, seeing all these different people from these different parts of my life in recovery cross paths. It's pretty amazing. Hold on a second, guys. I gotta get this delivery in there. So uh, I have two deliveries right now from IHOP. And this one is for Victoria. Which is this right here, boom. Pretty cool little feature there to flip the camera. Oh, I'm a pro at this apparently. So I'm going to 1124. 1124, there it is. Bill Frill, the man, the myth, the legend. 
Delivery complete. What's up, Bill? And Jake Turner. That was the second floor, Chris, but still, I gotta get exercise somehow, right? So I need a haircut, that's obvious. Sorry about that. My stepdad's on here. What's up, Bill? And Jake Turner, one of my first friends in life. How are you, Jake Turner? Good to see you. See you, Bambi. Bill, I just started doing this kind of, the Lord told me in his own little way, this, this is what he wanted me to do for a day. And I did it and it turned out to be pretty cool. And I don't really know what else to do sometimes. And turned into a pretty neat place where a couple of different people were talking about God and you never know what I'm going to see out here when I'm delivering food and doing stuff. Um, I'm taking IHOP to people right now. Just took IHOP to one and going to another one now. I'm over in Hooverville, if you know that area. Uh oh. Ooh, I'm going to Fairfield now. Goodness gracious, that's not fun. Man, I just got honked at because I'm looking at my GPS. Forgive me, sir. You got to be careful on this job. You can get pulled into North Birmingham and Bessemer area, Fairfield very easily. I don't understand it. There's got to be some incredible anthropologic, socioeconomic, I don't know. Honestly, it blows my mind because I would think that I don't, I can't even, because it's 2020, I can't even finish a sentence about anything that I was about to say. But why does it blow my mind? Oh God, I'm racist. <laughs> Just kidding. But, um, for real, I'm going to Fairfield now, and I did not know that when I accepted the order. I have one main rule that I stick to, and that's I need to make at least a dollar a mile. So if an order comes in and it's $10, it needs to be under 10 miles. And this one came in and it was $8.88, and eight just happens to be my favorite number. And it was over my rule by about a mile and a half, but I was about a mile and a half from the store. So I bent the rule and look at me now, I'm going to Fairfield, just like that. See you, Joel. Yeah, that's a geological oddity. It's like a, Chris, it's like a um, sociological sink that you, you get flushed down if you're not careful because it's not a safe part of town. It's not much fun to be out there. And you know, I'm gonna be in Fairfield. It's gonna take me 10 minutes to get back to the area that I wanna be in. So, but that's okay. Everything happens for a reason. I wonder if Bill is still at Charlotte Powell Morgan. Wow manager of the thrift store at the foundry. I don't think she's doing that anymore, but she was when I was there a long time ago. Several foundry heavyweights have been on here today. How are you, Bill? Can you can you say something in the chat to me? Just say hi, if you're still there. Happy birthday, by the way. I don't like to comment on Facebook because I, I think that it's, well, no, nope. 2020, I can't say how I feel. <laughs> how, how progressive is that? The, the more we go through time, the less we freedom of speech we have. It really just depends on if you're afraid of being judged, if you're afraid of being labeled or something. All I was gonna say is that it, uh, it's a cheap way to wish someone a happy birthday. Of course, I didn't wish you a happy birthday at all. So that was super cheap. But I didn't know it was your birthday, and I bet 95% of the people that wished it to you probably didn't know until they saw someone else wish it to you, which is cool. I mean, that's how birthdays go, mostly. Take the second left on Rutledge Avenue Southwest. 
Oh boy, I love this part of town. They've just got these red lights down here just bagged up in body bags. Like they're not even malfunctioning, they're just completely dead. Microaggressions. Chris, what does that mean? Oh, is that a liberal term? How do I not get reimbursed? Oh, I use an app called Get Upside that is absolutely incredible. I made a post on it on Facebook the other day trying to get people to get it. If you buy gas and you want like 10 cents, at least 10 cents off a gallon every time you fill up, simply for using an app, this app is what you want to get. It's called Get Upside, and I'll send you my referral link, and it'll give you $10 in free gas. And the way it works is you build up credits. Um, Head west on Mineral Avenue Southwest. Oh, man, come on now. Southwest, then turn left onto 41st Street Southwest. What? Goodness gracious. Well, you turn, busting a U turn down here in Fairfield. There's a time, there was a time. That, that would have, you know, I'd be down here doing this. Not delivering food. Come on. Um, anyways, that Chris, that Get Upside app, I, I got it about three weeks ago, and I now have $13, well, really more like $17 in money that's been given back to me. And I can choose what I want to do with the money. I can put it on a Walmart gift card. I can put it on all... They've got 15 different types of very popular gift cards, or I can just send it to my PayPal account, or they'll send me a check in the mail. Oh man, there's a train. That's the death knell of the delivery driver. Look at that right there. So now what I gotta decide, is there a bridge? If there is a bridge, where is the bridge? Or how long is this train going to be, is the question. Golly. I'm going to take a right and see if I can find a bridge here. Goodness gracious. This is a part of it. I love it when I see parts of Birmingham that I've never been in before. And it's hard to beat me now. I've been to basically every single part of this city. I could beat this train. I'm, here's the front of the train. If I can just get to across 30 seconds of time, I'll be able to hop it. Oh my goodness gracious, he's moving out though. This is exciting. I wish I had some train chasing music or something. Man, the Google Maps girl is freaking out on me because I'm totally going off course. All because of this train. Come on, Google Maps, reroute for me. Let me know where a bridge is. See, this is something this app could be a lot better on. They could have a thing where you press a button, there's a train, get me over the tracks, and it could find a bridge for me. Boom, it found it for me. This will be going down as one of the worst deliveries I've ever taken. Just saying. Because, boy, now I'm 3.5 miles away from the destination. All right, we're getting there, though. Three miles, goodness gracious. Trains will make you want, yeah, they will, but I mean, you know, it's just life. Trains happen. The timing of that was amazing. And see, that's an interesting thing with life there is I can choose to believe that that was just random chance or I can choose to believe that 
Lord Almighty knows that there's something that I need to miss or something there's it's happened for a reason and it will, will do me good all things work for good so I'll get to find out one day from dad himself what the heck I missed because of that train Brett Koretsky the lemon whiskey himself is here I need a haircut so bad what is up shoe shall Brett my one of my old oldest best friends We're door dashing right now, Brett Koretsky. Oh my goodness, I almost beat the train. And all that time was just wasted because this car. Oh, there's a second train. Look at that. Going the opposite direction. Unbelievable. And there's the train that I was trying to race. That's awesome. So I was good. I would have beaten that train too, but that other train is going twice as fast would have totally killed me because I don't even think I would have seen that Brett I'm delivering food for DoorDash right now just living life man and I'm um, apparently I'm supposed to start preaching or something I'm supposed to have a show or something radio show I don't even really know what it's something that God's been telling me for a while now and I'm trying to figure it out so this is something I did yesterday and it worked like it was it was a step in the right direction let me just put it that way so this is like practice and I'm trying to come up with a good name for it because if I'm gonna do anything out loud publicly it's gonna be transmitted over airwaves it's gonna have God in it and there's it's time in our society now that people that believe in Jesus and believe what I believe are not afraid anymore to speak out and to speak out against injustices, to speak out against things that, because it's coming, man. We, we've got, oh man, this new administration that's going to come in. It's going to be interesting to see who is going to stay brave and stay strong and say what needs to be said without fear of being labeled that's what's gonna happen you're gonna be labeled and you know it is what it is if it's done in love then you're protected you're safe and the cool thing is he told us this was gonna happen exactly like it's happening he told us that and that helps me out in moments where I'm you know I've been quiet I've just been quiet and sat back and been quiet because who am I to say anything and he has spent the last year or three years just, I miss you too, Brett. Teaching me that I'm who I am, actually. And um, the things that I've done and the mistakes that I've made are not who I am. That's not, it's not what makes me who I am. He is what makes me who I am. He's the one that gives me my brains, my emotions, my drive, my will. And, you know, he wants me to, to not be quiet anymore. So I don't know. I've been like, what are you talking about? How do I speak? What do I do? How does that happen? And um, he won't tell me specifically. He tells me in vague terms through different people and through different things that it's going to be something very big and very important and he spent a lot of time on my pride and preparing me for this because the person that and it might not see I still want to say it's it's not gonna be me it's not me what he's telling me I'm just making it up blah 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 blah, blah. and whatever is gonna happen moving forward with whatever it is he's got in plan in store for me is going to take a lot of pride diminishment where you cannot become proud and you cannot get wrapped up in money and you can't get wrapped up in things of pleasure and fame these things he has prepared me for to where I don't give a crap when anybody thinks about me because well they can think what they want to think. 
I'm sure people think some amazing things about me, like, amazingly, who knows, I honestly don't know, but he's done a great job of ridding me of that pride that cares what people think. But I am a people pleaser and I always will be. I want people to be happy and I want them to be free. And um, this person's license, he speaks to me through license tags all the time. And this one in front of me says, God, B-G-L-O, go, I don't, I have to get closer to that to see what that meant. But anyways, um, so Brett, that's why I'm doing this, man. And Amanda Whitaker's back. She didn't say anything last time. Now she's back again. Um, so I'm trying to come up with a name for this, whatever it is. And this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, I don't think, in the end. But this apparently is the first step in the way that, that the Lord wants me to, to do what it is he's called me to do, which is a big job, and it's scary, and someone's got to do it. Someone's got to be a voice in this darkness, in the wilderness, because it's, it's going to get darker and colder and more frightening. It's, it's getting worse, and y'all, everybody sees it. You might not experience it in your face. You might. It says, God, B-G-L-O. What does that mean? God, Big Low. I don't get that. Go, D-B, Glow? <laughs> okay, well, I am all the way in Fairfield on an IHOP delivery. I don't, this is incredible. But I, I see some of the most amazing things in our beautiful city. Birmingham is such an awesome city. And I've been all over this state and I've lived in many different cities. And nothing compares to Birmingham. Mile, turn right and... The chances that you're going to meet a really great person in Birmingham, I think, is about 8 out of 10. Of people that are not racist and that are not sexist and they're not class-oriented and are just good people. And uh, it's a miracle that I grew up in this city. And, um, you know, I've seen all different types of... I, I grew up in a, in a very affluent community. Take the next right onto by William Senior Drive. But now I'm not affluent. Not with money at least. But I'm kind of glad I'm not affluent with money because that doesn't really bring much happiness. I literally have no idea. I've never seen this part of Birmingham. It's a pretty cool little area. Definitely would be scary to some. I would think. Oh, now I know where I am. Never mind. I'm over by the Foundry Thrift Store now. Golly. I was just in Hoover a little while ago, and now I'm way over here. So the name of this thing is either going to be something with delivery in it. Maybe that's it. Just the one word, delivery. Oh, man, that's a tough one. That's one of the hardest creative problems I've had before. How do you, how do, you do this? Um... Got it. it needs to have, you know, I've been thinking about doing a podcast and that's just not, I hadn't been feeling that really as the, the thing that I'm called to do. And I've been asking him like, what is it that you want me to do? And he's told me, well, I've trained you in videography. I've trained you in sound engineering. I've trained you in script writing. I've trained you in all these different things and in the world of addiction up and down the street and in heartache and pain Turn right and loss losing you know having a beautiful son and a, a beautiful family for a very small amount of time and watching it just fall apart in, 1, feet, in a right very fast time, amount of time but he's been there the whole time 
and he's always told me why these things happen. And one of the coolest things he's ever told me is, how can you understand joy and happiness if you don't understand what not having it is? That just totally blows my mind that he is that cool to take me through. I couldn't do that to my son. I couldn't make my son suffer and feel the things that I felt. But I'm glad he, he did. I'm glad that I've been through the things I've been through because it's given me the ability to just appreciate some of the simple things in life. Things that if I had just become a doctor like my father or something like that and gone straight and not gotten into the trouble I got into and experienced some of the heartache that I've been through, I would not be able to appreciate getting these things back or just seeing people that I care about have those parts of their lives cleared up. And that's why I want to become an attorney. I want to get a law degree. I want to start a recovery program. I want it to be called Rock Bottom. If you come into my program, we're going to clean you up physically, we're going to fix you legally, and we're going to take over the world. I mean, we're, we're just going to, we're going to, the legal system is a quagmire and a broken, horrible system. All right, I think I'm here. My goodness gracious. 6404, I'm here. Cool. In Fairfield. Wow. So y'all get to go on this delivery with me. Here we go. If anybody can think of a better name for this, so it's somehow delivery with social implications and life applied Christianity or really just I guess spirituality but of course for me it's Christianity this is the house that is a six Great. cool delivery complete awesome Okay, now I gotta get back into Birmingham and out of Fairfield. Oh man, that was tons of fun there. <laughs> All right. So the reason I'm streaming this is to practice on having a show apparently that's what I'm supposed to do um, I don't know if it's supposed to be a podcast I don't I've asked God how am I to have a show like that doesn't even make sense nobody wants me to have like no one's come to me and, and said um, I don't even know how to get back to where I need to be so hold on just a second I'm way out in Fairfield Great. Okay. It's a one-way street. Sweet. All right. Spencer Braswell. Wow, what's up, dude? So this is just me practicing on how to have some type of a... It's not a show. It's, it's a... I don't even know what you call it. I need help with that. Um, I'm supposed to talk about the world that we live in, our country, and what God is doing. Because he needs a spokesperson. He needs someone that's not tied to any corporate entity, that has no fear of losing any type of reputation, that has no fear of being labeled anything. And that's me, guys. I, I I'm, have absolutely no fear of any of that. Like, you're not. What are you gonna take away from me now? So that's why I've asked God so many times. Like, why have you allowed me to experience this life like this? Like, why, why have me grow up 
in this wonderful, beautiful home and travel the world and all this great stuff, knowing that I was going to screw up and throw it all away and, you know, like, why give me a brain and make me so smart and everybody says all that so that I can then fail to do anything noteworthy? And out of anger at him, like, why don't you just make me stupid and then I don't have an excuse, or I, that is an excuse, instead of feeling like I'm just a total loser and I had no no excuse to do the things that I did. But he's told me why he did that. He's told me that he needed me to see these different aspects of life and to go through the pain and the suffering of losing it all so that I can come full circle and get these things back, the nice things in life that I want, like my family and a home. Um, And that's why everybody suffers and struggles and goes through hard times. It's up to the individual to choose to see it that way. And it's it's pretty deep thought that Jesus said that we would share in his glory and his suffering. He said that. Right, there's, there's things that pastors just don't preach on because they're scared. They might not even know they're scared. They just focus on other aspects of the word and Christianity, and they just steer clear of some of the sensitive stuff. And, you know, sharing in his glory, and it's this 50-50, sharing in his glory and his suffering. It's not all glory. It's not white picket fence, American dream. It's so, life is just awesome all the time. Nope, half the time you're gonna be struggling. He did not hide that from us. He told us that. He did, he did not. I, I'm sending you out as sheep among the wolves. Like, you, you're not. And that's a problem with the prosperity gospel. And a lot of pastors in the last two, three decades have preached a message of just, you know, lollipops and rainbows. And if it's not like that, then you need to do X, Y, Z to fix what you're doing. Nope. Nope. You can't fix it. The st you got to look at it differently. The, the suffering and the hard things that you're going through is just like, if you want to get stronger, what do you do? You go to a gym. Do you pick up, you know, pom-poms and helium balloons to get stronger? Or do you do things that hurt? You do the things that hurt. And that makes you stronger. And at first, you hate it. But guess what? After a while, you start to actually kind of love it. And that's not to say that you're going to love the hard parts in life, but when things happen that are out of your control, that's the time that we have to look at it like, well, I'm sharing in the suffering right now. Thank you, Jesus, for this, because you know that's what Paul did and James is just all about. Count it to joy, man, when I go through these hard things, because it is refining me. And I forget every time I go through something and I try to short the amount of time, shorten that amount of time that it takes for me to realize, wait, wait, it's dad and he's training me right now. He's strengthening me for something coming in the future. But I, man, I kind of went off on a rabbit trail there. Um, I'm doing these streaming sessions to practice whatever it is that I'm supposed to do, which is all he's told me is to speak, to stop being silent. And not to speak in a closet where no one can hear me. To do something publicly. And I've been trying to figure out, like, how do I do that? Nobody's asking me to come on stage and say a word. No one's ever done that. And I've always wondered why. Like, some people will say things about how smart they think I am and how my faith is so strong and all this stuff. But no pastor's ever asked me to come up and speak. Ever. I go through an entire year-long recovery program and I don't get asked once to tell my testimony or speak ever at all I don't you know that blew my mind didn't get mad about it because I knew that it was God literally God doing something and he kept telling me hey buddy where's your pride are you are your feelings hurt right now Bellum? that they're not asking you to speak what's that buddy and I'm like oh I see thank you for pointing that out to me dad because 
that's got to go. I can't have that because that'll that'll cause me to fail. Um, I've got to be where I just do what he wants me to do when he wants me to do it and frustration and anger and my pride being hurt is stuff of childish nature that need to be put away and I've got to realize that this place, this world that we're in, this temporary life that we're living, all it is is practice. It's just getting us prepared for what's coming next. Coronavirus has changed everything. I mean, people talk about death now like it's getting a bad headache or something. Like, it's like, well, he died, or he's gonna, you know, you're probably gonna die. Like, oh, whatever. People don't seem to be as afraid of death, almost. In some cases, I, I mean, at least they don't act like it. Like, I'm in IHOP, there are 20 people standing in the waiting room, which is maybe 10 by 10 feet. And I'm like, it's half of them are wearing masks and the other half aren't. And I'm just thinking, what are they afraid of, of catching a life threatening disease or not? Or a life threatening virus? Or, or are they not? Because if they are, they probably shouldn't even be standing in that room if they really fear for their lives. If they don't fear for their lives, why are they going through this ridiculous mask stuff? Let's go one way or the other. That's America. I know I'm going to be saying that a lot until the day I die when I've got a microphone on me and a camera pointed at me or just a microphone in my hand. I'm going to be tearing America down because America sucks. I'm sorry. The enemy has gotten into American culture. He's done it in every single society that ever rose in the history of mankind and he succeeded in tearing it down because What's the quote? Good men did nothing. And he knows, the devil knows how powerful peer pressure is. It's, God is so powerful. It will make the strongest and the most influential people sit down and not say a word when someone needs to stand up and speak. And he's done that in America. He, he has, man, he knocked the ball out of the park on that. So my job is to be one of the ones that stand up and speak against all the crap that's happening. And that's going to be a lot of pointing out American issues, American problems, American mindsets that are just so dangerous. They used to be incredible. When we first started, when our country was born in the first, I'd say, man, 200 years almost, but in the last 30 years, the devil's uh, strategies to destroy America are becoming way more apparent. And God's not letting that happen. It's, I mean, this, this time is running out on this thing. And people have been saying that for a long time, but there's there's things in the Bible that let you know where we are on that timeline and you can see we're coming close like it's I'd say it's the end of the third quarter maybe um, so this I'm trying to come up with the title for this if anybody has any ideas it is some type of pontification about Christianity. Okay, here's one of my humbling moments. This is a breathalyzer that I get to breathe into. Uh-oh, it said blow longer. This thing will give you the funniest messages. Yes. And I wasn't even drinking. Didn't even have alcohol anywhere near me, and I get to deal with that. So that's another reason why I'm going to go into law and fix the legal system, because it's a total nightmare. It's all messed up. Because I knew, I knew it, I just thought because of Alexander Shinar and those type men, and my brain just said, you're probably going to see a picture of him, and I did not script this, 
But what were the chances that I would pass that? That's just greed. No, I'm sorry, but I'm not afraid to speak on these things anymore. Alexander Shinara is an extremely greedy person who, man, the greed is, is disgusting. The, we got to do something about it, guys. we got to clean it up. So, this incoming, uh, you know, the last president, I didn't really see anything to say because he was so poorly spoken. <laughs> There's not really much you could say that wasn't obvious. But one thing I will give Trump, he was not a politician, thank God. That was one of the things I liked about him. And what we've gone and done now is we traded in a non-politician for your old friend, the politician. Bought and paid for, strings attached all the way up and down. Guy doesn't even know where he is most of the time. And he's running the country now. It's funny, it's the flip-flop of how we ended up with Trump. Because, you know, I voted for Trump because I didn't want Hillary Clinton, who was the ultimate politician. The ultimate... bad thing in the White House would have been her. So Trump was a better choice. And I'll, you know, looking at all the numbers on paper, Trump did a great job. I want to know why people that are so angry at Trump, why they're so angry at him. Like, what, what exactly changed in your life over the last four years that you can blame on the president? Because I think he did fine. I would have been fine within there another four years. But now, whew, it's going to be an interesting ride now. We're going to see who can be brave enough to stand up for what's right and speak out against liberalism and the decay of the moral fabric of our country. The hypocrisy that's going on has always been there. It's just getting worse, much worse, and it needs someone that will call it out. And then that person cannot be afraid of being judged for that. going to Zaxby's now. All right. One of my favorite places to pick up food. They almost always have it ready when I get there. I'm in Hoover now about to cross over Lakeshore and get on 65 coming back. Catherine Ann Shalacy. My goodness gracious. How are you? If you're tuning in to see what, what this is, it's me practicing on having a, I can't, I don't like calling it a show. I don't know what to call it. Um, the Lord has been telling me for some time now that I'm supposed to do something big and it's going to be something public and it's going to have to do with speaking or preaching. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to seminary school, I don't think. He says, you don't need to. You've been saturated for the last 20 years. You've been in seminary school, son. And I'm like, okay, cool. That sounds good. Um, the Daily Audio Bible is a huge part of that. I've been listening to it for... Lakeshore Drive. Turn on that Wi-Fi there. Okay, good. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, the Daily Audio Bible is... I listen to a show every morning. It's how I start my day, and I've been doing it for about 14 years now. It's an app. Um, it's a podcast that a man started reading through the Bible over the course of a year. About 15 years ago, he started doing it and putting it on the internet. And I was in a really dark place and needed a Bible and couldn't find one. And it hit me that I had my phone and I could probably find a Bible through my phone. Duh. So, uh went ahead and Google searched Bible and lo and behold, I see something that says daily audio Bible. And my brain said, Whoa, somebody will read it to you. And I loved that idea. I was like, great. Cause I cannot read the Bible unless I want to go to sleep. And then I read the Bible. It's like the ultimate sleeping pill. Um, so that was 14 years ago. I lose track of the time because man, time really speeds up, doesn't it? But I've been gone through the Bible 
I'd say nine times now. Though I've been doing it 14 years, I, I you know, had gaps where I didn't listen to the show for a few weeks at a time, or maybe I wasn't paying attention on some days. Right now we're in Ezekiel, and we're going through 2 Thessalonians, I think. I'm not certain on that. I'd have to look. Pretty sure. I know we're in Ezekiel, like Ezekiel 30, because he's a prophet, and I love prophets. Um, but whatever this is, whatever I'm supposed to do has to do with speaking about what God is doing in our society now and what you can do in your own household, in your own life to see things more clearly and to live a more peaceful life in the sense of when hard things happen to you and they're going to happen to you. Um, I think that's one of the main things that I'm called to do is to show people why God allows pain. C.S. Lewis has a book called The Problem of Pain that is an extremely deep read. Um, but that, that book is about how people are, you know, they get angry at God. Why, If you're a loving God that is all-powerful and says He loves me, why do you allow me to go through pain and suffering? And Jesus said, you will share in my glory and my suffering. What? So wait a second. I get to share in the scourge and the passion that, that you went through for us. I get to feel not. No, you don't have to do that, but you're going to feel a small taste of the things that I feel like when your child does things that hurt you. I know I've done so many things that have hurt my mother and, oh my goodness. He, he says, you think that that hurts. You should see some of the things my other kids do. <laughs> um, but what I'm supposed to do is speak out into this world about applying Christianity to your life shaking off the stigma that Christianity's gotten in the Turn last right. 20 years right. because some prolific pastors, televangelists, and, you know, people nowadays give it a bad name, give people a bad taste in their mouths. And sometimes you're going to have a bad taste, but, you know, some of the best medicine that you could take tastes bad, but it cures you. You got to get it down. So that's kind of my job. And that's what this is, is practice at that. I'm trying to come up with a name for this. Delivery con Dios. Delivery with God. Because um, I'm door dashing right now. Hey, Cassie Sparks. We're going into Zaxby's now to pick up food. The Lord told me to start doing this. He didn't tell me to do this specifically, but he told me that I would be doing something big and important. And I've been wondering what... And I'm still wondering what this is practice for that. That's what I've been trying to get out in the last 10 minutes is explain why I'm doing this exactly. I'm getting out of my car right now. Sorry. I got to get this person's name. Amber E. I like this Zaxby's because they normally have the food ready when I go in there. This is a cool part of this video show is I get to pick up food and take deliveries and covertly do it so that nobody really knows that there might be a crowd watching. Like the people, when I dropped off the food a second ago from IHOP, the guy wasn't wearing a shirt or anything. And uh, probably they wouldn't appreciate being put on public display. So I'm going to figure out some legal jargon to put on it. Nope, this is a public area, so I'm good. Um Going into Zaxby's to pick up Amber R's. Ma'am. Hmm. Well, that was pretty easy. 
Welcome to Door Dashing Live with Pelham. Oh man. Cool. All right, now where am I going? I don't really know if anybody would actually like to watch door dashing, but at the same time, if you can come up with some really good content to discuss while doing it, it'd be kind of a heck of a show. I mean, you got a lot going on. I mean, I'm trying to think of anything else like that, and there's not really anything that I've heard of, and that's this an important thing, being unique. That's a breathalyzer, guys. Isn't that cool? That's what you what you get if you get any type of uh, violation in your car. It just has a DUI type thing on it. And I am doing a pretrial diversion because it's the first time I was ever arrested in my life for anything. Now I get to blow in that thing. And I didn't even, mine wasn't even alcohol related. So gotta do something to fix the legal system in this country. All right, where am I going now? What in the world is this stuff? Oh, great, okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, let's not do that. How do I get out of there? Okay, good. <laughs> How are you doing, Mark Smith? Good to see you, man. Head east toward Columbiana Road. Going up Green Springs and down into... Downtown Birmingham, basically. Cool. I'm getting hungry myself. That's one of the hard parts of this job. You, you get to go into basically a spectrum of restaurants. I mean, you're gonna it, you're gonna go in somewhere that you've got an appetite for eventually. Whether it's Japanese food, Mexican, you know, chicken fingers. I hop, my goodness. So, take the next right onto Columbiana Road, then turn right onto Alabama 149 South. Deliveries for, oh, golly, I got to, I'm about to stop the stream just so that I can turn think. Right This is the first time I've ever had any type of platform or anything that I've spoken into, and I can now see that I am supposed to have a show of some form. I hate that word, show. I can't think of anything else to use, though. But I really enjoy a lot of podcasts. And it's like basically like talk radio, but it's not. I mean, it pretty much is, though. It's just you have more control over who you listen to with podcasts. That's what makes it really neat. So the, like Steven Crowder is one of my favorites. Um, Louder with Crowder. Um, he, man, they, uh, on the election night, they beat NBC with viewership. They had 3 million people watching their live stream. They beat out a major network. Unbelievable. And he's doing that because he's not afraid to speak. And he's he's one of my my uh, idols, I guess you'd say, or uh, influences, strong influence. Um, he is an excellent debater and just has a very strong view of American society and politics and um, is really well-spoken, he's real funny. And um, he's just, he's hard to beat. And I've known for a while now while watching him and listening to him that I'm supposed to do that. I've just been trying to figure out how. Like, what do I, how do I, 
do that. So that's what this is the second time I've done this now, and now I'm starting to see that I don't have any reason to be afraid to do it. I've been too scared to do it, and I don't really know why. I don't know why. I just guess I wasn't ready. But I don't know, something happened, and I pressed uh, live stream, and there we go. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm not just going to sit here. No, NBC is, isn't Chris, but it's a major network. It's a cable network. It's incredible that an internet show beat them out for viewers. It's, it's amazing. It's awesome. Claire Walker, what's up, girl? Worked with her at Atlantic Tool and Die in Anniston. Yep. I checked auto parts for a while. I've checked auto parts. I've dumped tubs of chicken. I've uh, checked quality control on chicken. I've, I'm a DJ. I've, uh, I've made the best pizza on the face of the earth. I'm a dough master. I'm a videographer. Um, I have worked in some wild places, that's for sure. And, uh... Here in the last few months, the Lord has just been telling me it's all coming to a head, buddy. You, you've got a big thing happening, and something real big's about to go down in your life. You got to be ready for it, and you got to—you cannot be afraid. Be courageous. Be very courageous, and I will be with you wherever you go. And I'm like, okay, what the heck are you talking about, God? Like, what am I supposed to do? Nobody's gonna listen to me. He said, oh, don't worry about that. I don't need you to worry about if anybody's going to listen to you or not. I just need you to talk. I need you to act. To stand up and speak when you know something needs to be said. So, that's what this is. The first step in that direction. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. But this doesn't cost any money. Um... And it gives me good practice on how to be a public speaker, I guess. I have no notes. I have no plan on this. It's kind of the cool thing about the DoorDash thing is it keeps something happening that's kind of exciting. I'm all over the city. I've never seen anything like this. So maybe this is it. <laughs> maybe it's uh, the delivery with the deliverer the name of it is hard to put my finger on um somebody come up with a good name for the for a, a show about it's like a I'm not going to label it anything because it's, it's not conservative, that's for sure. It's not liberal. It's not afraid of anything, that's for sure. That's why I like Louder with Crowder because he's got absolutely no corporate ties. He's completely self-made. Everything he does, he does from money given to him selling mugs. And you got to be in the mug club. Take the next right onto 10th and, um, South. Then turn left that's it. He doesn't have Pepsi. He doesn't have a lot of these other guys that I listen to, like Mark Levin. And um, there, there's a bunch of other talk show hosts that I like. I, you know, I listen to Ben Shapiro, but he's so nerdy. It's good to listen to all these guys, though, because it shows me the talents that, that they have. Oh, cool. I'm going to the hospital here. This is going to be tricky, guys. I'm going to have to figure out where they want me to meet them. Oh, great. Got UAB police right here. Let me look up this here. See if they gave it to me. Drive to ER side entrance and call, and I'll meet you outside to grab food. Great. Let me see if I can call with my tablet. I think I can. I've got Google Voice. This is going to be so cool. be used anymore oh man no it's got to, i've got a call from my phone so can i do this while streaming is it next